Hello! In today's show, we're going to talk about the slow process that is installing the October 2016 cumulative update for SharePoint Server 2016. The good news is I'll use lots of edits and cut out all the time, so the video should be quick. But first, our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And in today's video, we're going to work through installing the October 2016 cumulative update for SharePoint 2016. Should be lots of fun. All right, we're going to go through the process, talk about how to find out where the patch is, where to what build your process or your server is, and then just kind of little tips and tricks and my thoughts along the way. It is a slower process, but that's what editing is for, so we should be in good shape. So let's get started. Okay, so we're here on my SharePoint server, and so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up Central Administration. So I'm going to hit Start. I'm going to type in Central. There it is, and we'll say yes to the pop-up. And remember, you want to be logged in as the SP install account or the SP admin account or some account that has access. If you've been following along with my series on how to install SharePoint 2016 using security best practices, you're using SP install, and so that's who I'm using as well. If you need a link to that, check down in the description or the pop-ups or wherever it might be. I'll give you a link to that video in case you're curious. But here today we're going to talk about installing this October update. So the first thing I need you to do is figure out where your farm is. And so to do that, what I want to do is from Central Admin here, we're going to go to Check Product and Patch Installation Status. And so from this screen, you can see that I am currently at build 4432.003. I have really no idea what that means. So generally speaking, what I'll do to figure out where my build is, what builds are available, things like that, is I'm going to open up a new tab. And I'm going to go to www.toddclint.com. When his terrible face pops up, you can see the mean things I've done to it in post-production because eh, that's what I do. But over here in this navigation, you've got a SharePoint 2016's builds. So we're going to click on that. And so here, Todd has tracked all the different builds of SharePoint since the beginning of time. And with that, if we scroll to the bottom, we're going to see that he has updates for the October 2016 patch. So that's the one we want to talk about in this episode. And if we switch back over to our farm here, we can see that the latest update that we have is 4432. And according to Todd's blog, 43, 44, easy for me to say, 32, is the September 2016 patch. So we know that, okay, our farm's out September, yay, but we want to go to October. Now with the October update, you don't have to be at September, right? These are cumulative updates. So as long as you have RTM, you can be installing it. So whether you're RTM, May, June, July, August, September, any one of those, you can go forward to the October update. Um, so because I've been doing the series here, I've already got September, but once again, you don't have to have September to install October because October includes everything that's in September. Also while you're here, one of the things I want you to take note of, right, is Todd has a link to bugs, notes, and regressions. If we click on that, we're going to see that currently there are no bugs, notes, or regressions for SharePoint uh, 2016, the October 2016 update. And A, there's two reasons for that. One, the update's only been out for a couple weeks, so people haven't really had a chance to have issues with it. But two, you also find that um, Microsoft's done a lot better job with the cumulative updates for uh, SharePoint Server 2016. We haven't had a major boo-boo like we did with SharePoint 2010 and SharePoint 2013. So knock on virtual wood right? Because if I knocked on my desk, you would hear that in the microphone, then you'd yell at me in the comments. Um, but if you do that, it's good to know that Microsoft's had good luck with not having issues um, with this 2016. I think a lot of that has to do because SharePoint 2016 is so much based on Office 365, but that's just me guessing. Either way, looking here, you can see that there are three different updates. And so the first one, the October 2016 patch language independent file, so it's KB311-8372. We're going to go ahead and click on download on that and get this started. So when this page pops up, you can see the nice ad for the Surface stuff. But really what I want to do is I want to hit download. And then along with more Surface ads, I'm going to get a, hey, do you want to run or save this update? I want to save it, and I'm going to do a save as. And the reason for that is because I want you guys on your C drive or whatever drive works sense for you, so on my C drive, this machine, I have an install folder, and then I have a folder where I keep all the things I've ever installed on this particular update. So in this case, all the different CUs, along with some other bits. So I'm going to do a new folder here, and I'm going to call it the October 2016 CU. Hit enter. And so then we'll open up that folder, and then we'll hit save here. So that's going to save that particular update into that folder, 
And so I just like to keep all the files I ever install in a SharePoint farm, whether they be updates or uh, third-party applications or farm solutions I might deploy. I keep all those in my install folder. So that way if I ever need to rebuild the server or build a different server using the same things, I'd have all those patches available. So that is all done downloading. Woohoo! So that's one piece. We're gonna go back here and back again. And so then here we'll see there's a second download and this is for the language dependent files. So this has all the translations. So if you're running different language packs other than English, so if you've got, you know, French, I think it's uh, got a lot of viewers out of there, German or one of those type of language packs, you're also going to need to get the proper language pack for your version. So we'll close this, so it gets out of our way. But we're going to do another download here. So we'll do download and then we're going to do a save as again. And so I'm going to put this in the same exact folder. So I'll say save. So now I'll have both of those and when that downloads, we'll back up here. And so you can also see that Todd has a link to the office uh, for the Office Online server stuff. So my farm, I do not have Office Online, Office Online deployed. If you did, you need to go to your Office Online servers and uh, deploy those patches as well if you needed to, right? Which brings us to another point around cumulative updates. Generally speaking, you shouldn't just arbitrarily put a cumulative update on because it's out. That's a good way to get yourself in trouble. Remember with SharePoint updates, you cannot uninstall them or you can't, you know, revert, revert oh, easy for me to say, you can't revert back or you know, undo them with it short of, you know, wiping your farm out and restoring from backup. So you don't want to just put on updates because if it does end up having an issue, you essentially have to wait until the next one comes out and hope it fixes your issue. And it's not always good for your production scenarios. So generally speaking, the only time I put on cumulative updates, if I can say I'm having that problem right there and that cumulative update right there fixes it. If, you don't, if you're not in that scenario, if you're patching just for fun, yeah, you probably need some different hobbies. So, all right, so that one's downloaded. Uh, remember here is also the links to the KB articles if you wanted to go and read what each patch has, what's going on with those, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so we'll close out this. We will close this window. We'll close Todd's ugly face again. If you don't trust getting your update information from Todd or from me, well, I don't know why you're watching the video, but if you wanted to, you could also go to this link right here. And so this link is Microsoft's page where they drive all the updates. And so if you look at it, you know, they do have the October update listed, the KB articles, and from the KB articles, you can then find the download links. But the problem here is twofold, right? One is you don't get the build number. So you have no idea when you see 4432, what build you're on based on what's here. You could go and look through the KBs and figure it out. Not very easy. And two, they're not tracking any of the bugs or regressions in the same way. So like I said, we've been lucky with 2016. We haven't had any, but go look at his 2013 build list. If you want to see, uh, it's like, don't install this patch. It blows your farm up. Try this one instead. There's a lot of that type of stuff. So just something to consider. All right. Anyway, we'll close out of this. So we're good. We've got our patches. So I'm also going to just close out of central admin. And so back here on my desktop, what I want to do is I'm going to navigate over here to my C drive. And if you're wondering why things are kind of missized, I bump up the fonts on everything to try and make it easier for you guys to see in the videos, which just kind of Windows has a hard time rendering well. So what do you do? Anyway, here's my C drive and then my install folder and then my October 2016 CU. And so I'm going to start with the file STS 2016 KB. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to say yes to the pop-up. And I'm going to say I accept their license terms and I'm going to click continue. All right, now this update, it runs pretty darn slow. In my testing, it's been taking anywhere from 45 to 50 minutes. So we'll see how long it ends up taking here. And I can also tell you, I went and did a lot of different scenarios. So I did one scenario where I installed it on RTM and I did another one where I installed it on the September update and uh, tried mix and matching. It doesn't seem to matter. This update is just really slow. And we know that the September one took like an hour and a half. Uh, so this one is faster than the September one. But unfortunately, if you install this one after the September one, you still have to, you still end up 45 minutes. I was hoping that if I kind of incurred all the slowness in the September update, that installing the October would not be as slow, but I was not so lucky. So while this runs, I'm going to hit pause and I'll come back as soon as this update finishes. And I'll also hopefully give you an idea how long it took. All right. See you in a minute. And we're done. Of course, you know, when I'm trying to get this video done, that time it took about 55 minutes. Um, one of the great things I'd appreciate in the comments below, if you guys would leave how long this update is taking for you, it would just be helpful for my curiosity's sake, right? I've done it 
Well, I've done it a lot, but I know I did it 45 minutes one time, 50, and now 55, all on the same hardware. So in theory, it should be the same uh, time and speed for me, but it hasn't been. So anyway, hopefully you were watching cat videos or puppy videos or drinking adult beverages while that was running because it is pretty slow. All right, so it asks if I want to reboot or not. We're going to say no because before we reboot, I want to go ahead and install this other patch. I'm going to double click on that. Right, and this is the language dependent one. So if you had multiple language packs in your farm, you might have multiple of these patches to run. If you're like me, you just got one. We'll click yes. And then we'll say, yep, I accept the terms and click continue. And so now you can return to watching videos on YouTube or drinking or whatever it is you want to do. So I'll hit pause. I'll see you in a second. All right, so that took yeah, five, six minutes. I don't know, just enough time for me to edit the video that I recorded earlier. So everything's all edited, keeping up with that. But uh, this is done, so we'll say okay. And we know that it still has a pending reboot, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that knocked out of the way um, before we continue on. In theory, you could do it post um, running the config wizard also, but I don't know, I always feel better doing it now. So I'll hit the reboot process, and while that does, I'll hit pause, and I'll bring you back as soon as I get back to the desktop. All right, see you in a second. Okay, so the reboot just finished. I also realized that in that last segment, I had my earpiece in, right, this little guy, because I was watching videos and didn't, uh, change back so oops it's a little silly there but what do you do all right so what you need to do now is now that everything's set is we need to run the configuration wizard so we're going to start and do config and click on that guy we'll say yes to the pop-up and so what the configuration wizard is going to do is it's going to take all of our changes that we've now made and roll them into our farm now keep in mind while the configuration wizard runs your farm will be offline so you know However, that's worth, uh, you know, you need to plan for that. There is an option to do zero downtime patching here with SharePoint 2016. There's a link down below in that uh, for that. Microsoft has a video. It requires you to have a full Fidelity farm though. So, you know, you need to have a minimum of eight SharePoint servers, right? Using Mineral, you got two front ends, two app servers, two search servers, and two uh, distributed cache servers. And so then you can patch them in a very specific sequence and you can actually achieve zero downtime. It is possible, it just takes a lot of hardware. All right, so now that this has popped up, what we wanna do is we wanna click next. And it's like, hey, remember that warning Shane said your farm's down? Well, there you go, the server's offline. And so then it's like, all right, time to run. Good, so we'll say next. And so now it's off to the races. We're on task two of 10. Um, you know, the bulk of the work happens on task nine of 10. So just as you're watching and waiting for that to happen, and then you'll also sometimes see in uh, task nine that it'll jump up to like 104%. And you're like, that doesn't seem right. How do you have 104% patched? Don't question it, just let it chug along. That's pretty normal behavior. So I'm gonna let this guy chug. I'm probably gonna go find some food. I'm getting kind of hungry, it's that time of day. But I will hopefully be back in just a second for you. Thanks to pause. Oh, thank goodness. I never thought I was gonna finish. I was actually starting to shop on the internet. That was bad, right? I ran out of puppy videos to watch. I read some Twitter and I was shopping. So that's how long it was taken. Actually, it took me about, eh, I'd say right shy of 30 minutes. My other test took 25 minutes. So, you know, somewhere in that ballpark is about how long Configuration Wizard ran for my farm that has no data. So we'll hit finish. And really that finishes up everything for us. It's gonna launch Central Admin for us, right? We know that we can go in there. We'll be able to look at the uh, build version and confirm that the build took. And then we'll go in and look at the uh, database statuses just to make sure that those are all in a good place as well. I'm also happy to report I don't have the earpiece in again this time, so I'm not making myself look silly. All right, so if we click on check product and patch installation status, you'll see our farm is now at a wonderful new build of 4444. Very lucky, probably a lot of numbers. I should play this tonight. And if we go back to the homepage of Central Admin, we can go to upgrade and migration and then review database status and you'll see that all my databases are happy. Um, you will notice that your My Content database, if you're doing My Sites on site, database is up to date, but some sites are not completely upgraded. That is the, um, I won't call it a bug, we'll call it a feature. Uh, there is a special site collection created called the Fast, uh, Fast Site Collection Creation. Uh, it's a special one, it has like a tag of Site Master and it causes this uh, behavior. So in reality, the database is good. Just that one uh, site collection is a little upset. So not a big deal. You can uh, power through it. You can go check the logs if you don't trust me, but that's what the issue is there. So, all right. Well, I think that'll wrap us up for the video today. 
Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, installing it. Remember to leave me notes on how long your process ran and took. It really just helps me understand. It helps other people out there. Also, if you'd like to see more or less of certain parts of the video, always looking for comments. I'm also always looking for subscribers. So hit the old subscribe button. It doesn't hurt you. It helps me. It doesn't hurt you. It's a win-win. And as always, if you need any help, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows. Or if you want to work together, good old bold zebras right there. They're happy to hook us up so we can have a more professional engagement. I'll wear a nice suit and tie. Yeah, probably won't, but it sounded good. All right, thanks and have a great day.